nature is not a place to visit, it's our home. Nature is all that we see. Animals, insects, disappearing into their surroundings. Using deceptions, disguises, lures. Nature is all that we hear. The call of an eagle, the hiss of ocean spray, the rumble of thunder, the doings of a cricket. The wonderful beauty of nature, the crucial, fragile affinity between animal life and their environment. All of this is World of the Wild. Of the over 70% of our planet covered by water, just 3% is fresh. Falling and collecting as rain, freezing as ice, and running again as meltwater, this surprisingly limited resource has shaped a multitude of ecosystems around the world. In this episode, we explore these diverse environments and the wildlife that has evolved in concert with them. We will encounter congregations of great egrets, hunt the waterways with dragonflies, learn the secrets of platypus, bask with hippopotamuses, and learn the specialties of freshwater crocodiles. A widely distributed species, the great egret is an elegant yet customary presence in tropical and temperate freshwater ecosystems throughout the world. Standing up to a meter tall, this nimble, long-legged bird with its extendable S-shaped neck is perfectly designed to capitalize on the feeding opportunities that flowing or standing freshwater provides. For egrets, freshwater environments offer the perfect hunting ground. Feeding on fish, frogs, aquatic reptiles and insects, they slowly patrol the shallows, waiting for prey to come within striking distance of their blade-like bill. Once speared, the meal is swallowed whole. But egrets are not always at the top of the food chain and must remain vigilant if they are to stay off the menu themselves. Their stylish appearance is no accident, and egrets preen themselves fastidiously. Their name is a derivation of a French word meaning both silver heron and brush, a reference to the long, wispy feathers that the birds grow during their breeding season in order to perform courtship displays. Breeding season draws egrets, as well as other water birds, into large congregations around the waterways. Once a mate is found, the great egret forms a monogamous relationship in which parenting duties are shared. Both sexes construct the nest, a platform of sticks above the water that they will depend upon in order to provide for their young. Even abundant freshwater systems can experience lean times, and dense nesting populations can stretch limited resources even further. For the egret, if the parents cannot deliver sufficient protein to their chicks, aggression in the nest is common. With hatchlings turning on each other, deaths often occur with the dominant chicks surviving to receive a greater share of whatever food their parents can bring in. 
A partially migratory species, egrets in the northern hemisphere will join other freshwater birds and fly south to avoid the colder winters. Relatively slow on the wing, egrets are efficient in the air, and with just two wing beats a second, they can attain cruising speeds of 40 kilometers an hour. A conservation success story, the great egret was severely overhunted in the 19th century for their plumage, which was used to decorate ladies' hats. Legal protection over the last century has seen the numbers of the bird return to healthy levels and today egrets are expanding their range. While habitat loss is a serious concern to many freshwater species, the great egret appears more comfortable with the human presence and is frequently found in urban bodies of water demonstrating that this glorious bird is here to stay. One of the most dexterous and agile predators of freshwater systems, the dragonfly has an unexpectedly close bond with the water. With an estimated 5,000 species spread across every continent except Antarctica, there is no shortage of variety amongst these dazzling insects. Their common features include a heavy body supporting two pairs of wings, a long slender abdomen and massive complex eyes that provide incredible vision to assist in both hunting and avoiding predation. But while dragonflies are most commonly known in their winged adult stage, this is only a small part of their life cycle, lasting just a few days or weeks. The vast majority of the dragonfly's life, up to several years, is spent in the water hidden from view as aquatic larvae. Their veined, membranous wings mean that dragonflies are not only capable of flying in any direction, they can also cover 100 body lengths per second, perform high-speed maneuvers, or hover perfectly still in mid-air. Their flight is so specialized that they will only eat prey caught on the wing. And consuming as much as a fifth of their body weight per day, dragonflies play an important role in controlling freshwater insect populations such as mosquitoes. But dragonflies are not the only predators around the waterways. And within a spider's web, their short lives as adults can come to an even earlier end. Many male dragonflies are territorial. Claiming a feeding area near the water, they will zealously defend it against rivals for a few minutes or for several hours. As cold-blooded creatures, dragonflies need to maintain their flight muscles at a suitable temperature, and waterside plants allow them to bask in the sun while surveying for prey. When a female is drawn into a male's territory, a uniquely choreographed mating ritual can commence. Often occurring in mid-flight, the male grasps the female by the head while she curves her abdomen to create a heart posture and receive his sperm. Egg-laying then takes place. 
sometimes with the couple still attached. Depending on the species, the female may deposit her eggs directly in the water or inject them into certain aquatic plants for incubation. Although a seemingly abundant creature, there is much still to be learned about dragonflies, and habitat destruction is a serious concern. Given that dragonflies are most abundant in rainforest freshwater systems, deforestation means that species are potentially being lost before they can even be named. As with so many animals in the natural world, the best policy to preserve them is to preserve the environment they depend on. Perhaps the greatest misfit of the natural world, the platypus appears a curious composite of aquatic animals. But this mysterious creature is, in fact, a highly successful freshwater specialist. From cold alpine rivers to tropical rainforest streams, the platypus is endemic to eastern Australia and occupies a varying range of freshwater habitat here. part duck, part beaver, part otter, it is such an unlikely creature that when scientists first studied a specimen in the 18th century, it was deemed a hoax. One of only five species of egg-laying mammals or monotremes, a platypus's unusual adaptations are precisely the reason for its success in its freshwater environment. Covered in dense brown fur, the platypus's waterproof coat traps an insulating layer of air against their body to maintain a constant temperature. Webbed feet aid in swimming and maneuverability through the water. And their beaver-like tail is used to store fat reserves to see them through times when feed is scarce. While their rubbery snout appears duck-like, it is a far more advanced sensory organ. Closing their eyes and nostrils during their dives, platypus do not hunt by sight or smell, but through electroreception. Sweeping their bill from side to side, they detect the faint electric fields generated by their prey. Even in the murkiest conditions, platypus are able to locate and dig out their quarry, storing it in cheek pouches before returning to the surface to eat. Needing to eat around 20% of their body weight each day, platypus spend a daily average of 12 hours searching for food. With each dive lasting approximately 30 seconds, much of this time is spent on the surface, either floating while breathing through the nostrils on the top of their snout, or resting up out of the water. Another of the platypus's many oddities is the fact that males are venomous, a rare trait amongst mammals capable of injecting a powerful toxin through the spurs of their hind feet. The purpose of this adaptation remains a mystery. The fact that females lack this attribute leads researchers to speculate that it may be used during breeding season as males fight each other to secure mating privileges. Today their greatest threat is habitat degradation 
particularly through damming and irrigation of the waterways. A retiring and elusive animal, platypus numbers are hard to establish. But what is certain is that healthy waterways are key to maintaining healthy populations. Vital to life on the land, most terrestrial creatures depend in some way on freshwater ecosystems for their survival. In Africa, one land animal has taken this relationship to the extreme, the hippopotamus. Tipping the scales at up to two tons, the barrel-bodied hippopotamus is among the largest terrestrial animals on the planet. With a diet made up entirely of grass, during the cool evenings and nights of sub-Saharan Africa, the hippo spends hours grazing on land, travelling up to 10 kilometres from the water in single-file pathways. Their feeding sessions can wear muddy tracks into the landscape. Feeding aside, every other aspect of the hippopotamus's life takes place in or around the water, and they have evolved an array of adaptations to their amphibious existence. With eyes, ears and nostrils situated on top of their skulls, the hippopotamus is able to keep these sensory organs above the waterline while the rest of the body is submerged. Although their thick, hairless skin secretes a natural sunscreen, hippos depend on the water to regulate their body temperature and will spend 16 hours a day within it, socializing in large herds presided over by a territorial bull. Their weight-producing, watery environment has supported the development of the hippo's bulky physique, but, despite their webbed feet, the hippopotamus cannot technically swim. Too dense to float, they remain submerged for several minutes at a time and negotiate deep water by leaping to the surface from the bottom. Unperturbed by their lack of buoyancy, hippos are so comfortable in the water that they can sleep beneath the surface, automatically rising to breathe without waking. The sheer size of adult hippopotamuses affords protection from almost all predators in their freshwater habitat. Individually, crocodiles are often forced from hippo-occupied areas. But in rare cases, cooperating crocs have successfully taken down fully grown adults. Aggressive animals, hippos do the most damage to themselves. Starting with a yawning threat display, males will often compete for dominance of a herd, inflicting significant injuries as they progress to fighting with their enlarged canines. Classed as a vulnerable species, Hippo numbers are declining throughout Africa, with their meat considered a delicacy and their teeth a valuable substitute for elephant ivory, poaching is a major concern. Agriculture is also an issue, with irrigation reducing the waterways. Conservation efforts targeting illegal hunting and habitat preservation are slowing the decline but more is required to ensure the future of this extraordinary creature.
one of two species of crocodile found in Australia. In order to survive here, the smaller freshwater crocodile has adapted to a more specialized freshwater existence. Despite their name, freshwater crocodiles are tolerant of salt water, but in shared habitat with the larger, more aggressive saltwater crocodile, they are outcompeted, even preyed upon. And while their saltwater cousins are more widely distributed throughout the world, freshies are endemic to northern Australia and have evolved to occupy more peripheral freshwater environments. A modestly sized species of crocodilian, male freshwater crocodiles rarely grow longer than three meters and weigh around 70 kilograms. While it is not the top predator within its range, the freshwater crocodile's more compact stature means it can survive in water systems that will not support larger predators, granting it de facto dominance in these niche habitats. Their slender build affords access to areas that saltwater crocs cannot reach, such as arid, rocky, or more elevated freshwater systems. And because freshwater crocodiles are relatively sociable, they can live within these environments in large groups. With unusually long slender snouts, freshwater crocs are capable of extracting prey from tight spots, such as rock crevices or submerged root systems. With smaller, sharper teeth than saltwater crocodiles, freshies tend to target smaller prey and will feed on just about every bite-sized creature their freshwater environment has to offer, particularly frogs and insects. Larger meals are not out of the question, and freshies employ a sit-and-wait strategy to take prey visiting the water to drink. Even bats skimming the water's surface are vulnerable to attack from this opportunistic predator. In the tropics, the low water levels of the dry season can fragment waterways and deplete their resources. Given their lighter build, freshwater crocodiles are able to walk efficiently with their bodies and tails raised above the ground, covering considerable distance overland in search of more viable habitat. When threatened, they can run at a gallop for short distances, heading for the safety of the water. Legally protected within their range, freshwater croc numbers are nonetheless declining due to an introduced species of frog. Cane toads were deliberately released in Australia in the 1930s in a failed bid to control cane beetles within sugar plantations. Gradually spreading across the country, these poisonous frogs are lethal to many species that make the mistake of eating them. Freshwater crocodiles, chief among them. With the frogs all but unstoppable, it is hoped the crocodiles are learning to avoid this invasive threat. A seemingly inexhaustible commodity, freshwater is in fact a scarce presence on our planet. While only 3% of the Earth's water is fresh, the majority of that small amount is frozen or trapped underground, with just a fraction flowing on the surface. Due to man's over-exploitation of this precious resource, Freshwater animals face projected extinction rates five times higher than creatures on land. In this episode, we have seen elegant great egrets, waterborne dragonflies, the peculiar platypus, unruly hippopotamuses, and specialized freshwater crocodiles. 
for the future of these creatures, of countless others, and of humanity, it is imperative that fresh water, the giver of life, be steadfastly protected.